And that's really awesome, you know, because the fact that, you know, you can, you know, you're, you're doing what you love and you, you're working with the clients that you want to work with while making the money for the better, too. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm kind of on a mission to get rid of all bad marketing out there. I just absolutely cringe when I see bad marketing or bad branding or, or you know, people being random or schizophrenic with their marketing. And then you have to wonder, you know, you're not getting any traction. You're doing all this work and all this effort and good for you. But if it's not focused and clear and targeted, then you're just spinning your wheels. So I really love that aha moment of helping people realize, wow, if I just put some, some thought into this brand strategy first before I go off guns blazing on a Facebook account and Twitter and building my website and designing a logo, like I take that step back, those decisions become much easier and more importantly, much more effective. So um, that's really fun for me to help, to help people, regardless of the budget they have, figure out how to do that the right way and really really showcase the business and the brand that they have in mind. You know, when you're dreaming of your own business, what is it that, that they want to build and being able to help them to the point that they go, yes, that's exactly what I wanted this business to look like and say, and thank you so much. So that's been really fun. Yeah, definitely. Now, of course, like since uh, her last appearance on the show uh, a couple months ago, you know, she has been doing awesome made recent appearances on you know on msnbc and and of course like other podcasts as well now and of course you've been going you had some uh you know uh, trials as well so i don't i don't know if you're comfortable with sharing some of those trials here or not um yeah i mean it's, it's a part of my entrepreneurial story but in in 2008 shortly after starting my own business i was actually struck down by a brain aneurysm that ruptured and um i was extremely fortunate that I was able to get to the hospital right away and um, that my long-term effects were not as bad as they could have been. But I did have to overcome some cognitive challenges um, and learn how to work and live in a different way. So after months and years, you know, I'm giving you the cliff notes, but after months and years of, of rehab and, and soul searching and, and trying to manage around this new me, I was able to get back to my thriving business again and create create a really a business and a life that I love and that works for me given my, my health challenges. So um, I wrote a book about that called Rebooting My Brain. And it's been extremely rewarding to, to uh, bring that story to people who really need it. I get, I mean, just this morning, I just got another email from someone saying, thank you so much for writing this book. I feel like you told my story. And it, it makes me feel so much better. And, and it's wonderful you know, just to your audience when you're able to write about your experiences and you do it from a place of, of love and the reward you get back by, by people's response to that and how much it helps them. You know, I, I, it's not the same level, but when I wrote my branding book, Branding Basics for Small Business, it was kind of the same thing. I got emails from people saying, thank you for helping me launch my business the right way. And and streamline what I was doing and, and rethink how I was running my business and now it's thriving. You know, I just, I love being able to to tell a story and have it help people. And that's kind of what I do with my clients, have them tell their story and um, in the hopes of really serving and helping their audience. All right. Now I get, now of course I'm going to reference uh, one article that you wrote on your blog called, uh, it was uh, the, you know, talking about you know, discovering your epiphanies. And I'm going to quote something that that was really struck me. That says, I will argue that really and truly there are no mistakes. Can you elaborate more on that for those that that haven't, you know, read read your work already? Yeah, sure. So just to clarify for people, um, Shovel, you're talking about a blog post I wrote recently called, called about profound epiphanies. And this idea that, you know, as entrepreneurs and just... As humans, there's a lot of things we do in our lives that are mistakes, right? There, we go into business with the wrong person. We, our business fails. Our, um, we're, we're in a bad relationship. And you, know, you look back at the story of your life, you realize you wouldn't get to where you are right now had you not gone through all those twists and turns. And so in a way, 
are there really any mistakes? You know, given I, I was kind of reflecting back on my life and I wouldn't be here with my current husband, with my baby, with my business, you know, living in our house, had I not taken some of those forks in the road way back when, you know, there's sort of those decision points we have in our life. And so I sort of think that maybe there are no mistakes. Maybe they're all just part of that patchwork of our story and you know, we learn from them. Every time I'm, I'm dealt with a challenge, I kind of look at it as, you know, once I've, I'm done cursing and, and kicking the, the wall, you know, it's, I kind of go, okay, what am I supposed to be learning? And, you know, it makes you smarter the next time, you know, getting into a bad business relationship with someone means you're not going to do it again. Right. And you're going to go into another business relationship with someone with your eyes wide open. Same thing with a personal relationship. Um, if you had a really bad relationship in your past, you're more, you're more appreciative. You're more eyes wide open. You're more, you know, this, these are the things I'm not going to do to ensure, or that I'm going to do to ensure that this nurtures into a, a loving relationship. So whatever it is, personal or business, I, I don't know that there are mistakes. I mean, unless everything drives you to a horrible bitter end, you know, mm. <laughs> really that is the patchwork of your story and that's what makes you unique and that's what makes you who you are. And, and ironically, just kind of bringing it back to business owners, a lot of times when I'm working with solo entrepreneurs, we're talking about their personal story because we need to bring that into what they present to the world because that's what makes them unique. They're not necessarily doing something that no one else is doing, but their story and their experiences, good or bad, add to the richness of what they're able to do in the business. And so I usually use that as the basis for their, for their brand strategy. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it, to me, it's kind of interesting to have those, what, what I was terming profound epiphanies that you know, really, if that bad thing hadn't happened, would I be here right now in this better situation? Hmm. Um, and when you can look back on things like that, it's really helpful. Okay, so I want to dive, de dive deeper into that because the thing is, it's like, you know, some of us might, you know, as entrepreneurs might, you know, feel like, you know, feel like we're stuck in, in a situation where, where, where we cannot like, get out of, you know, like if we were looking to get that breakthrough to us financial independence and it seems like if nothing is working out. And right. especially college graduates who are looking for their first work but right. they cannot find it, and they might be wondering if it was worth going to college. Right? Can you, why would like what would you say to those who might think, "Oh, you know, I'm, you know, it was not worth it to go to college." Well, I, I mean, I can't speak to that because, in general, because everyone's situation is different. So, I'm, you know, I'm not some some spiritual guru that can that can speak <laughs> to that. <laughs> Just somebody like doing my own thing, but. But what I would say is really, with any, is anything ever a wasted experience? Really? Mm. You know, was there someone you met that became your best friend? Was there a nugget of information you learned in one course that you've actually used in your life? Was there a connection you made? Was there, you know, was there something that led to something else because of that experience that you have? I don't, I don't know that you can really say something is a complete waste of time. Um, even if it turns out you realize you're not the academic type. You know, that's useful information to know. Like maybe you're not the type that it can learn in a classroom environment. That's something useful to know for the rest of your life, right? So so I, I don't see how that could ever really be a wasted experience. It might feel like a waste of time. You might have some regrets, but if you if you turn it and think, well, what did I take away from it? Regardless of how bad it was or how much I hated it, like what are the nuggets that I can take away from it? Um what I, what I, you know, when I was writing that post, part of what I was thinking was all of the different cities I've lived in. Um, I've lived in um, Chicago. I've lived in D.C. I've lived in Indianapolis, San Francisco, Seattle. And you could say there were some points in that road where, where you know, were those jobs a waste of time? Were those cities a waste of time? And absolutely not, because I learned new skills that helped me to this day. And I made friends that are still friends and connections to this day that I would not have made if I had not spent a year there, two years here. So that's kind of a hard question for, for me as sort of like, who am I to answer that for somebody? But um, I would just challenge people to look at it that way. Yeah, I definitely, 